This is part 109 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss integrating Facebook authentication in our ASP.NET Core application. Integrating external login providers like Facebook, Google, etc. is similar, meaning if we learn how to integrate one of the external login providers, integrating others is similar. We discussed configuring Google authentication in our previous videos in this series. We do that in configure services method of the startup class. On the iService collection interface, we call add authentication and on that we chain add Google extension method and to this method we pass Google options object as a parameter and then specify client ID and client secret as you can see right here and similarly to configure Facebook authentication we use add Facebook extension method and to this we pass Facebook options as a parameter and then specify app ID and app secret. We discussed registering our application with Facebook and obtaining app ID and app secret in our previous video. So now let's configure Facebook authentication for our ASP.NET Core application. Just like add Google, notice when I press dot we find add Facebook method and there are several overloaded versions of this method. We are going to use this overloaded version where we can pass Facebook options as a parameter. To this add Google method, we pass Google options as a parameter. To add Facebook, we pass Facebook options as a parameter. With Facebook, we specify app ID and app secret. With these two external login providers configured, that is Google and Facebook, let's run our project and see what we've got so far. Notice now under the external login section, we have a button that allows us to log into our application using our Facebook account. Notice here on this button, the name of the external provider, in this case Facebook, is not completely displayed. And that's because within our site.css file, we have fixed the width of the button to 75 pixels. One way to fix this is by setting the width of the button in our login view to auto. This for each loop dynamically generates a button for each of the external login providers that we have configured. So let's set the width of this button to auto. Notice now the name of the provider is properly displayed. When we click any of these buttons, the form will be posted to external login action within our account controller. So let's place a breakpoint here and then click the Facebook button. Our breakpoint is hit and notice the name of the provider. It is Facebook. The code in this action and in this external login callback action is written in a generic way. So this works for all the external login providers like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, etc. Upon successful authentication, Facebook redirects the request back to this external login callback action because we configured this as the redirect URL right here. And we discussed the code in these two actions in detail in our previous videos when we configured Google authentication. So let's place another breakpoint right here and continue our execution. We are redirected to Facebook and it's asking me to log in using my Facebook account. I registered for an account with Facebook with this email, prajimtest at gmail.com. Let me log in. Notice, upon successful authentication, Facebook redirected the request back to this external login callback action. Let's place another breakpoint right here and then continue our execution. Notice this external login info object. The login provider is Facebook and this is the unique provider key. For this external login, we do not have a corresponding record in this ASP.NET user logins table. Let's view the data we have in this table. We have only one row and that's for Google login provider. So let's go to our account controller, place another breakpoint right here and then continue our execution. Sign in result failed because for this external login provider, in this case Facebook, we do not have a corresponding login in this ASP.NET user logins table. So let's place another breakpoint right here and then further continue. 
notice the email claim we received from Facebook. It is prajimtest at gmail.com. For this external user, we do not have a corresponding local user account. So we create a new user and then this create async method inserts a new row for this user in ASP.NET users table. So if we take a look at the data in this table, we have a new row with email prajimtest at gmail.com and the password hash is null because this user is using his external login account to log into our application. In this case, he used Facebook and this method add login async adds a login in this ASP.NET user logins table and then we sign the user in and then redirect him to the return URL. So let's continue. There we go. I am now logged in using my Facebook account. If we take a look at ASP.NET user logins table, notice we have a new login. Login provider is Facebook with this unique provider key. And look at the user ID. It ends with 116C. So this external login is linked to this local user account in ASP.NET users table. Notice this user ID also ends with 116C. So my external account is linked to this local user account. Now let's understand what we actually did until now. With Facebook, I have an account with this email, prajimtest at gmail.com. This is an external login account using which I logged into our ASP.NET Core application. When I first logged in, I did not have a local user account with this email, prajimtest at gmail.com in ASP.NET users table. So we created a new local user account with this email and linked it to external login account in ASP.NET user logins table. Now with the same email prajimtest at gmail.com I have another external login account this time with Google. If I now log in using Google what I do not want to do is create another local user account with the same email prajimtest at gmail.com in ASP.NET users table. It's the same user. I'm just using another external login provider, this time Google. So what we want to really do is link these two external login accounts to the same local user account in ASP.NET users table. In a nutshell, this is what I mean. Local user accounts are in ASP.NET users table. At the moment, we have one local user account with the email prajimtest at gmail.com and look at the user ID. It ends with double D 31C. Our external login accounts are in this table, ASP.NET user logins. At the moment, we've got two external logins, Facebook and Google. And both these external logins are linked to the same local user account. Notice both the rows ends with double D 31C. Now let's log out and log back in using Google. Notice the login provider is Google. Now let's disable all the breakpoints. And then within our external login callback action, let's place a breakpoint right here on line number 184 and then continue. We are redirected to Google. Let me log in using my email prajimtest at gmail.com. And remember, using this same email, I also have an account with Facebook. Upon successful authentication, Google redirected the request back to external login callback action. And if we take a look at the email claim value, it is prajimtest at gmail.com. If we now look into ASP.NET users table, notice we already have a local user account with that same email prajimtest at gmail.com. So this line right here is going to find that local user account and notice the user object is not null. Since the user object is not null, it's not going to come inside this if block and end up creating another local user account with the same email. Instead, what we want to do is link the external login account that is Google to the local user account. And this is the line that's going to do that. So let's place another breakpoint here and then continue. Now 
in ASP.NET users table, notice we have a new row linking my Google external account to this user ID. Notice the user ID ends with 116C and the login provider is Google. And notice this row right here, login provider is Facebook and the same user ID ends with 116C. So both these external logins, Facebook and Google is linked to this local user account with user ID 116C. And if we take a look at this user ID, it is our user with email test at gmail.com. So all that is left right now to do is sign the user in. So let's continue. There we go. I'm now logged in using my Google account. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.